Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Lauren Mays. <laughs> What's up? I don't know what this is. I have brought you here to talk about some of the books that I read in the month of June. This year is flying by. Anyway, I had a very good reading month in June. I think I told myself that June would be the month that I catch up on my reading goals and I definitely did that. Let's get into this because I read a total of eight and I'm in the middle of two books right now. Pretty content with what I read and I really enjoyed everything that I read this month. So, um, and I started a new thing in my bullet journal where I drop things. I have a book notes section now so I write little notes per and that's really working out for me. So all of the series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket, I have all the audiobooks of those because Tim Curry narrates them. I mean, they're freaking amazing. But I listen to them while I'm at work because it really kind of takes me out of my head while I'm doing busy work. So I've really enjoyed listening to those, but i also collecting the actual books too to someday read them to my kids. That's just kind of a little little dream of mine. First book that I read in the month of June, I read series of unfortunate event series of unfortunate events book the fourth, The Wide Window. So this one I really enjoyed. The first three I've enjoyed so much are three Baudelaire children are staying with Aunt Josephine, which Aunt Josephine is a stickler for grammar, so that was very fun. What I really love about these is that you learn something new in every one of them so you learn new phrases this one obviously is grammar centric so it kind of uh what i really like is that it explains some contractions so she explained it's versus it is the contraction it is so i t s versus i t apostrophe s which i really enjoy and then they also explained the phrase hook line and sinker which means obviously all the adults are falling for Count Olaf, a.k.a. Mr. Sham in this one, um, which is very funny. I always think Lemony Snicket has a very clever way of adding, like, Count Olaf's name is Mr. Sham because he's a sham. and It's just... That's what I enjoy about these. They're very clever, very dark, very fun. So I'm really enjoying reading these. So this one so far has been my favorite of the series. So the next book that I read, well, I listened to, I know that there's verbiage for people who listen to book versus read books but to me it's still reading and I'll have a whole video on that if you want to hear my thoughts but anyway I read the next one I read was series of series of unfortunate events book the fourth which I'll put the picture up here the miserable mill the Baudelaire children are now sent to this mill and they're forced to work there's some really fun aspects to it there is a trance going around and they have to find the key word to get them out of the trance which is very fun the downfall of this and why I didn't quite enjoy it as much is because the main owner of the mill uses the word midget a lot and I don't know I just don't you I don't like using that word anymore it's kind of outdated we don't really use that word anymore so it kind of it kind of annoyed me because he would yell midget a lot the Netflix series they do not use that um, and so the series has been wonderful to watch alongside these as well. It kind of docked some points because this one wasn't as fun. It used that word a lot, but there were some fun aspects to it. One, two, and three were so great. Misery Mill, I gave it maybe like a three star or something. I didn't enjoy it as much, but it was still very fun. The third book that I read, I actually did not finish. And I, I feel like I have an explanation for the, it just wasn't the right time and or maybe I just don't like this particular author but I listened to the audiobook of Fiercely Happy by Jenny Lawson and as you guys know in my life update my anxiety and depression was out of control and I was seeking help and starting medication and thought you know reading a book about mental health might help me not feel so foreign to this new world of going to the doctor and and getting help um, but I do not feel that it helped me at that time I feel like it drove me crazy I was in a constant state of spiraling my thoughts to where I'd be just exhausted by the end of the day and I'd pass out and I was tired all the time and I just felt like listening to this book didn't do anything for it actually made me super stressed out. She kind of has a disclaimer at the beginning of the book that if you don't understand my humor, maybe you're not crazy enough. And I don't, 
I don't know if I agree in that. I mean, you either like her humor or you don't. And I tried reading her first one too, and I did not finish that one either. So maybe she's just not for me. But I think at the time that I decided to pick it up, I thought it was going to help me with my mental health at the time. And it just made me angry and even more anxious. So it was not the right time for me to listen slash read that book. I don't think that I'm going to return back to Jenny Lawson because honestly I felt like a lot of her stories were silly and her playing with a lot of taxidermy animals in the middle of the night because she has insomnia and like I used to have insomnia and that was the last thing that I would think to do. I don't know. I just thought a lot of her stories were silly and I thought it was going to be a book about mental illness but it was really just her telling really ridiculous stories and she does have a valid point in her book of saying this is how it feels to have mental illness and these are the things that people tell you like just get over it everyone has anxiety everyone has a story everyone has a sob story you're fine so I do I do appreciate that that she did address you know common things that people tell you when you have anxiety but I think it just brought me even more. My anxious level escalated when I was reading that book and it would make me furious. So while listening and driving, listening to that book was not very good for me. I feel like it got me into like manic stages. I don't know. To me, not the right place, but I just don't know if I'm into Ginny Lawson. That's all I will say. I know that I did film a whole video about Furiously Happy and I decided not to post it because I couldn't eloquently describe my dislike for it because I was in the beginning of my medication stages so I just didn't feel like I was myself but this is my little more cohesive thought on that and I'm pretty content with it so let's move on so then I needed a nice buffer so I went on to series of unfortunate events book the fifth, which I do not have a physical book copy either because I'm waiting to find it at McKay's. I get these for about $4 at McKay's. So I just wait and I'm almost done collecting the whole series. But I went on to the fifth, which I really enjoyed the fifth one, more so because the Baudelaire twins meet friends and kind of allies. And so I loved getting their interaction with other kids their age that understood them and the fact that they were the quagmire triplets but one of them had passed away so that technically they were just twins and everyone called them the quagmire twins and they kept correcting them and saying the quagmire, quagmire triplets to me that's so funny because quagmire means weird and offbeat and offset and most people were were very uncomfortable that they were still calling themselves triplets when they were just twins and I just that's Lemony Snicket for you I love him you know not a whole lot happens in that they go to a boarding school they meet the quagmire triplets they have become allies with the quagmire triplets they also have a large fortune so people are trying to get to them as well and I'm enjoying the progression of the story so far then I got into my cousin Rachel which first off let's admire this cover really quickly. I am collecting all of Daphne du Maurier's works and reading them. I enjoyed my cousin Rachel even more than Rebecca. So, and I loved Rebecca. So I love, I just loved my cousin Rachel. I loved seeing her write a male protagonist because Rebecca is obviously a female protagonist and she does a male protagonist very well. Ugh, I just don't want to say anything because I don't want to ruin anything, but it's very like very suspenseful, very intriguing. You're in the head of a lustful 24 year old that's a little, a little naive and he falls under the trap of cousin Rachel. Philip, who is 24 and when he turns 25, he actually gets his fortune, fortune and he gets his family home. His cousin Ambrose marries cousin Rachel and He's very close with Ambrose. They write a lot of letters and it has come out that Ambrose has passed away. Um, and then there's a lot of rumors about cousin Rachel, but she comes to visit Philip and she's very irresistible. It's so good. And the movie is out and I really want to see it. it has Rachel Weiss in it. Rachel Weiss, Rachel Weiss. I've already said this in a video, but it's only playing at one theater in Nashville and I just need to make it out there. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend this version. Got it at Book Depository. Pick her up. Next, another book I absolutely loved. Had such a good reading month. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. I finally did it, you guys. I finally did it. Okay, so Ray 
Bradbury has always been a big part of my life. I've always watched the movies that he's written with Ray Harryhausen. Love him. And I was a little nervous getting into Ray Bradbury because I just have so much hype around him personally that I was worried, but no longer worried. This was so beautiful, so sobering. I just, I highly recommend it. So our main protagonist is Guy Montag and he is a firefighter, but this is set in the future when firefighters are really no longer needed. Houses don't catch on fire anymore. So Ray Bradbury's thought was that what do you do with firefighters when you don't need them anymore? They actually start fires now. So this is kind of in a civilization where um, they don't want people to be very well educated because that helps control the public. So it, you know, there's only certain mandated books that people can own and firefighters are meant to go and destroy books. He actually goes into homes and burns books if they are found. He's a little brainwashed and one day he meets, you know, a young teenager named Clarice and they have a lot of interesting conversations and he starts to realize what is my purpose in life? What have I been doing with my life? And it's just, it's so quick, so easy. It's just wonderful. I love this. Now I want to read all of his books. Definitely give this a shot if you've been interested in Fahrenheit 451. That's all I want to tell you. It's so good. And another really interesting thing is that earlier this year I was at UCLA in the same library that he wrote Fahrenheit 451. So I have, after I read 405, I'm saying Fahrenheit 451 so many times. But after reading this, I really got into um, watching interviews of him talk about Fahrenheit 451. It only took him about nine days to write this book and he had to rent a typewriter for 10 cents a half hour. So it cost him $9.80 to write this book. I think it came from his great great grandmother was tried as a witch um, and was burned to the stake and she's in a lot of history books. A lot of the book burnings throughout history is what he was truly inspired by and that, you know, that's trying to control the public. He He's just like, in the book they really dwell on well-educated people are like loaded guns and so he thinks that the real threat to our mankind is ignorance, which is so true insert political rant, but I won't. Then after Fahrenheit 451, a series of unfortunate events, book the six, the air set elevator, which was enjoyable as well. They're staying with these, this couple that you're either in or you're out. Elevators are not in, so they have to take all the stairs up to the apartment. It was very in to take in orphans at this time. It was, it was pretty fun. It wasn't one of my favorites. Characters were, were really fun this time. Eventually orphans become out of fashion. So I wonder what happens to our Baudelaire siblings after that. I went straight into series of unfortunate events books, the seventh, which takes them to the vile village and they stay with Hector, who is a very wonderful educational. He really wants them to thrive and he really wants to give them everything. So they really love Hector and it has a city full of ravens and crows. And then they have the old crows that kind of actual people, old crows that make all the rules for the town. So this of course wasn't my absolute favorite, but the whole series has been very, very fun to read. So I'm excited to get through all of these. I love to read these in between complicated books. Those are all the books that I finished in the month of June. I'm very proud of myself. I'm gonna actually double pat. <laughs> Not just like one pet, double pat. I'm in the middle of two books. One I'm already kind of like, meh. Then this one, Savage Song, V.E. Schwab. Freaking amazing. I have like a hundred pages left. I am planning on just devouring this and finishing this right after filming this video because I can't hold it anymore, I need to know. And then I've already bought the second book, so I'm ready to go. And I am listening to The Nest by, her name is really long, oh goodness, Sweeney, something Sweeney. I'm gonna put the book here, I'm so sorry. It got a little dark, didn't it? The Nest is, is okay so far. I don't know if I'm gonna finish it. Nothing's really like happening or it's not really that interesting. These are the books that I read in the month of June. Hopefully I can carry this on to July and have a wonderful reading month in July as well. I'm loving this warm weather. I'm loving the longer days. I just went and had the pool to myself and read a few chapters. I hope you've had a wonderful June. Please tell me if you read any of these books as well and we can chat about them or tell me what you read in June. I'm really looking for some books for July. But anyway, 
Thank you so much for watching this wrap-up video. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.